Good evening, everybody. I'm Chef Rob. How are you all out there? Uh, welcome. Uh, I hope everybody's enjoying this beautiful weather. It's unbelievable, right? So I, I guess I, I've never used my barbecue so much in my life. Well, that's because I've been traveling the island all the times and uh, now I'm grilling almost every single night. But I am grilling indoors. I have an indoor grill just because I'm preparing other things with it. So let me get started. I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to throw both dishes on at the same time and then slowly go over each one. Okay. So first what I'm going to do is put on some sweet sausage. Okay. I want to cook it on this grill. I brushed it with a little bit of canola oil and a little kosher salt and black pepper. The reason I use the canola oil is it can take a high heat on the grill. Okay. So that's what I am doing. So I'm just going to take this sausage right here, start grilling this. Okay. I started cooking it a little bit because you want to still go outside tonight, don't you? And get some fresh air. Yeah, me too. But I'm in no hurry at all. Okay. So our, I'm going to leave the sweet sausage over here. This is what you call a rope sausage. Not like the links where they were all kind of tied together in little sections. This tends to be a little more moist because it's a thicker cut of pork. I'll get back to that in a second. The other thing I'm cooking is mahi mahi. So what I'm going to do, you oh, when, the mahi mahi, it always should have a nice fresh look to it. And it should always have that nice red bloodline in there. That means it's really, really fresh. Okay. Mahi is a very good tasting fish. I'm just going to brush a little bit of olive oil on here. And then I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of kosher salt on it. And then a little bit of black pepper. And then we're going to throw that right on the grill. And then I can work a little bit without gloves, which would be great. Okay. Mahi Mahi is a very lean fish. Has a great texture, perfect for breaking up in like the, for tacos or uh, or doing almost like a jerk chicken or like down in Florida when they do grouper. Uh, if not, mahi mahi is their second uh, choice that they usually use. So I am just going to get rid of these two pans right here because I don't want to contaminate anything. So we have the mahi mahi going. That is going to cook for about three to four minutes on each side. And then I'm going to keep tossing this. I want this sausage to get to be about 165. I want all the juices to run clear. Okay, don't want any red left in it. The sweet sausage or the Italian sausage on, with the rope, it, when you're done grilling it, leave it sit for about five minutes because it will let those juices stay in. Just like when you have a turkey at Thanksgiving, okay? So I'm going to make the caprese relish right now that's going to go with the sausage, okay? If anybody has any comments, please post them. If anybody has any uh, questions, please let me know and I'll be happy to answer it. My son Chris has been always filming these and he'd be glad to tell me, okay? Even if you just want to say hello, okay? I don't always get to know everybody's names, but... You can even put your name in there, okay? I may know you, all right? Um, and I will give you a list of all the different uh, programs I have coming up this whole week, okay? Uh, all different ones, every single day. Okay, so to make the caprese relish, what I am going to do is take some really nice tomatoes. This one here is a beefsteak tomato. Look how beautiful that is inside. Pretty soon we'll be getting our local tomatoes. Be even better. So I am just going to cut this into small little pieces and just put this right in this bowl right here. Just making a little bit because how much of this, I do these programs almost every day now, so how much of this can I eat? My neighbors really like it though. They're really having a good time. We actually did a chocolate chip cookie pizza the other day and I have a lot of those classes coming up. And we had guests that were just out here from Westchester, and I live out in Hampton Bays, and I said, we got to go give it to them. So we went and gave it to them. It was a little boy and a little daughter, so it was really cute. Uh, I am just going to move this 
sausage. If you can see, that gives it a nice grill mark on there. Okay. Uh, I am going to add some capers to this. Capers, make sure that you rinse them really well. Okay. And then I like to give them a really good chop so it really goes throughout the mixture really well. Capers are used in like a puttanesca sauce and Mediterranean cooking. Uh, they're brined, so you always want to rinse them to get that salt up because it, it still will have a lot of salt in it. So I just have the capers and the tomatoes in here right now. I think my son's saying, we have a question out there. One person said, hi, Chef Rob. Hello. Someone else said, hi, Rob. Great seeing you again. Thank you. And someone asked, can you use cherry tomatoes? Absolutely. The best tomatoes that they have or that you've had recently, get them again and stick with those, okay? They, they vary, they change every week, okay? Sometimes it's the plum tomatoes, and the plum tomatoes hold up really well, but as you saw, this beefsteak tomato is really, really good. So I am gonna add in a little bit, just a dot of ch chopped fresh garlic, just a little bit. I'm gonna add in some Italian parsley, this is some really, really fresh Italian parsley. Make sure you get those little stems right off of here. Okay, if they're really tender, it is okay to use them. But if they're a little tough, get them off. So I'm just gonna give that a rough chop. Make sure you wash it really, really well. Someone asks, what can you substitute for capers? For capers, uh, you either love capers or you hate capers. So. It sounds like you might not be a caper fan. I would say just leave it out because all the other flavors, since they're so fresh at this time of the year, I would just say leave it out, okay? I wouldn't put anything really extra in there. Uh, I'm gonna add some basil. Now the basil, you never wanna really wash the basil because what happens is it gets wet and it gets brown really quickly. So what you wanna do is actually take a damp towel, like a paper towel, after you kind of are done with it, then just pat it dry, just like this, okay? Uh, you don't want to cook basil, and you don't want to get it wet, okay? So if you just take a damp towel, then take a dry one and pat it dry, and it will stay nice and fresh, and all that different flavors, and uh, be really, really good. So I'm just going to get just a little bit more basil, since this is really good. What I'm going to do, roll it up like this, and then really closely just shred it and this is called a chiffonade I can really smell that basil it smells so sweet there's actually a gentleman at the Mastic Shirley library here every year he gives me a small little basil plant with the little leaves they're so sweet so so fragrant and I, I miss them just because of him and his family but I'll miss my basil plant too Thank you, if you are watching. Okay, so I'm gonna add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil to this. Again, a little bit of kosher salt. I'm just gonna take my mahi and just kind of move it over so I get some really nice grill marks on here. And I leave the spatulas on the one side so I don't kind of mix it up with my sausage of that. I am going to add a little bit of black pepper. And this one here, this dish here, you can add the garlic or you can leave it out. It's a preference. So I, sometimes I throw it in, sometimes I don't. A little bit of red onion. Chop that really small. So tomorrow night, if anybody, uh, not busy, I know the weather's really good, but I'll be at the Kamsawag Public Library, uh, I should say virtually, and at 6.30, it's on Facebook, and I am doing Baltimore Crab Cake Sliders, and then I'm doing a flatbread with grilled zucchini, roasted zucchini and hummus and arugula. So if you can go to that, go to that, and that's 6.30 tomorrow. Someone said they enjoy all your recipes. Thank you so much. I have so many coming. As I'm finishing this relish and the sausage, I'm going to tell you a little bit what I've been doing, uh, trying to keep busy. I'm um, just dicing this onion up right here just to finish the caprese relish. 
Okay, add as much or as little of the red onion as you like. Okay, just like that. I still have to put in a little bit of red wine vinegar. Just a little bit on top. Now, if you are not a sausage fan, you could make the, if you just take this caprice relish and put it on a grilled baguette, you will love it that way as well, okay? And now to finish it off, I am gonna put a little bit of fresh mozzarella. Fresh mozzarella is so good. I always like the salted fresh mozzarella. It just brings out that flavor in it. If you just have fresh mozzarella by itself, I find it kind of plain. I think it needs a little kick. So I am just gonna take, I have some thin slices here of the fresh mozzarella. And I'm just gonna dice this up as well. Give it a rough chop and put that in the mixture. Okay. This does have summer all over it, right? Doesn't it? So what I'm gonna do, just toss this around. If you ever wanted this just like as a salad, what I would do is I would take some cubes of nice fresh Italian bread, toast them up and toss it in this with it and it absorbs the, the liquid. Oh, so good. So, so good. I am just going to take this sausage off because I am sure, I'm just going to put this in there. I want to make sure it's all clear juices and that it is to the 165. Okay, so I'm just going to take that off and I'm going to let that rest now for a little bit. While that is resting, I am going to turn my mahi mahi, flip that over. Doesn't that look good? Picture that on a nice sandwich, okay, that would be just so good. Serve that with a little ramalad sauce or you could put a little of the jerk seasoning on it. Really, really good. Okay, in the meantime, to finish up the sausage dish, I want to take some baguette, get a really nice, good quality baguette at the bakery. I'm just going to cut that little edge off there. So I'm just going to cut that right here. Okay. Just going to open this up here. I'm just going to drizzle just a little bit of extra virgin olive oil on here, a little kosher salt. And what I want to do is I want to grill that bread and just get it, just everything grilled in the summer is so, so good. Okay, in the meantime, I'm going to take a clove of fresh garlic, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to smash it sideways like this. Because by doing that, it really opens up the flavor in the garlic. And then what you do is just kind of spread it all over the baguette, just like this. And it really gives off a nice garlic scent in there. And you could do this at the very end or in the beginning, okay? Anybody else? Any other questions, comments? Nope, don't see any right all now. All right. And then if anybody is interested on Thursday, it's at one o'clock in the afternoon and it's at the Hicksville Public Library and I am doing an asparagus corn pasta salad. Uh, it has summer all over it, okay, very healthy, uh, a very fresh dish and I'll probably do something else as well, okay. In the meantime, while I'm waiting for that bread to toast and let the sausage just rest a little bit, I just want to show everybody this. When I first started doing libraries about eight years ago, I would always take, everybody could see it's a nice red potato. If you've been watching me throughout the island, you know what I'm going to do. But if, if you're just watching your own libraries, you have no idea what I'm going to do. What this is is an apple cora. Take the apple cora, put it halfway through. Okay, just like that. I put this in. And now I'm just going to leave it right here on my cutting board. I'm taking a very sharp knife and I am just going right against the metal bar as I twist this. Does anybody out there know what I am going to make it? 
I'm going to turn it from a potato into a different vegetable. Do we have any guesses out there? Chris, anybody out there guessing? Nope. Come on, I need some guessers. It's a little bit delayed, so they won't see it right away. Okay. So everybody, what this does, it's, it's a potato, apple cora. You press into it, and you take this off, and you have a potato mushroom now. So what I would do with this is brush it with a little olive oil, kosher salt, and black pepper, and roast it in a 400 oven for about 35, 40 minutes, okay, until it's fork tender and really crispy on the outside. Yeah, someone guessed pineapple. Somebody guessed pineapple. Here, you're going to get a mushroom, though. We have some questions. Sure. Someone asks, could you use papaya instead of mango? Absolutely, yes. And also someone said that sounds delicious. Thank you. And said that the mushroom was so cute. Thank you very much. I do a lot of the children's programs as well, and I just did, finished doing about 10 videos. They're on YouTube. So if you go to your public library this summer, uh, all the different libraries on Long Island, you will see uh, I do cupcake programs, but then I do little fun things like I just did there. Nice grilled bread with that garlic scent right in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on a really nice plate right here. You can cut it in half. You can leave it nice and uh, full just like this. I am going to take some of the Caprese relish and I also do want to get some of that mixture, that juice, to soak right into the bread. Okay, Just like that. And just drain it because that bread is going to taste so good like that. This is a recipe that I did probably about eight years ago when I was first starting into the libraries. And people, a lot of times they want different dishes, but I have some people say, bring back that one dish you did. And this was one of them. So I hope you will try this. Chris, do you have a question? Uh, someone said, I'm definitely going to do that at our next party. Very neat. And then someone asks, where did you find this cutting instrument? For the apple oh, okay. core. For the apple, the apple core. Uh, let me see what I just did with it right here. Amazon, uh, Bed Bath & Beyond, Walmart, all of them have it, especially online. A lot of times you're going to the store right now, you're not finding it. But you really do need this one, the metal one here. I just bought this one because I actually misplaced my other one. And I guess it was, a, it was about $8, okay? But it makes it a little fun. So if you're having a dinner party, and you want to put out potatoes that look like mushrooms, it's really creative and something different. Okay. okay, so my sausage here has rested well. I just want to make sure my fish is cooked all the way through. That is absolutely perfect, so I am going to leave that right over here. Someone said they're hungry now. <laughs> I get that way after I'm cooking this. Uh, I never eat before this because there's always this left over. And I try to make different things every night for different libraries, so I'm not eating the same thing. But like I said, certain, you know, we give them to some neighbors and that, you know? There's some that we don't, so shh, okay? Okay, so now I'm gonna take some of the sausage and I'm just gonna slice it. You can cut it in the little circles just like this. Okay, or when I'm in the library, I kind of cut it on an angle like this because if you go to my classes, you know I like to give you a nice, really big portion. Just a suggestion, what I would like to say is if you are having a lot of guests over, I would do some with sausage and some just with the Caprese relish just because not everybody likes the sausage, okay? So I'm just going to finish this one up on here and then I will put this... Over here. So I hope that looks good to everybody out there. Okay, I am going to put this over in front of the grill. I am done with my grill. I'm going to give everybody another class if you want to come see me. It's on Facebook. And it is at the Baldwin Public Library, and it's this Thursday night. It's either 6.30 or 7 o'clock, and I'm doing, it's the same day as Hicksville, and I'm doing four different tea sandwiches, okay? 
really creative sandwiches. So if you're having a little party, get together. They're really good. And it's all things that we can find nowadays in the stores. Okay, okay so I am going to make some pineapple relish. Someone said, or they asked, is there a name, of, name brand of sausage you recommend? The one that I use, I go to Restaurant Depot. Uh, not everybody can get in there, but if you know somebody that has a business or if you have a business, you can get in there, even if it's not in the food industry. Um, it's called Pork King. If you can't find the Pork King, if you can't get in there, go to like your local maybe uh, where they make the sausage, the, uh, the fresh raviolis, any Italian pork store should have it, okay? But it's really, really good. It's worth it. Someone said delicious. Someone else said awesome and yummy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so I am, again, I'm letting that mahi-mahi just rest a minute. And what I am doing is I'm just going to take some mango. These are really beautiful mangoes. They are from Mexico. They have a really nice blush skin to it. Uh, if you've seen me recently, I do go over the mangoes. Uh, I always say back in March and early April, they come from Peru and Guatemala, and they're dark green, and they are probably the best uh, mangoes you'll ever have. If you need these ripe really quick, put them in a brown paper bag. Put them in with a tomato, an apple, okay, a banana, any one of those fruits, and it'll be ripe so quick, probably within a day to two days at the most. I like to actually just peel the mango. My thumb can go into this a little bit. That means it's nice and ripe. There is no rotten spots on this. It is pure, fresh mango. I love mango. I do a mango lemon soup. It has like half and half lemon juice, lemon zest, and a little bit of sugar. The only time I put the sugar in, though, is if the mangoes aren't that great. Okay, so if you see something like this, you don't need any sugar in there because it's natural sugar. Any questions out there, Chris? Nope, don't while see I'm, any. While I'm doing this. All right, if we don't have any questions, while I am cutting up the mango, I'll tell you of another class that I'm doing. It is this Friday at 3.30, and it's at the river. See, I, I'm not even looking at anything. I got it in my head. It's Friday, and it's on Zoom or Facebook Live at the Riverhead Free Library. And I am making a flounder franchise with toasted almonds and arugula. Okay, so if you can join me there, please. You're allowed to go to the other libraries. I am just going to slice up this mango right now what I like to do is cut it right up against the pit okay I don't want to get any of that stringy part in there I lay it flat just like that now I am just gonna go against the pit this one actually I'm noticing has a huge pit in there so I don't feel like I'm gonna get a lot of mango on this one here less more on the side I hope yeah this is nice right on the side here getting a lot more and what do you do with the mango with the with the pit you take it you cut as much of this off as you possibly can and then you eat it like corn on the cob and then you just floss for about an hour and a half okay because it really gets all over you okay so I'm gonna leave that on the side for right now I'm just gonna dice up the mango into nice chunks How's my uh, filmer doing, Chris? Huh? How's my photographer doing out there? Ever Wonderful. <laughs> oh, ew. He, he's been doing a fantastic uh, job for myself. Uh, everybody out there, I, I have never had a Facebook page, but I do have one now. And it's Simply Creative Chef Rob Scott. So if you want to go to that and like it, and then you can, I will every week put up all the different libraries that I will be doing different events at. Someone said he's awesome. Thank you. You're Thank you. Oh, you're talking about my son, aren't I'm you? Talking Ooh. about me. Okay. <laughs> he is awesome. Yes, he is. And I have another awesome son too, Robert, who's just fantastic. But not as good as me. <laughs> we have fun. 
My son and I, we go biking almost every single day now. We go walking every day. The, this, this is probably the best week that it's been all year, I think. Just incredible. Okay, so I want to make this relish here. I'm going to squeeze in two fresh limes. You want light limes, just like this, okay? The lighter the lime, the more juice you'll get, okay? Someone so, said you are doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I'm very fortunate that I'm able to do this in many ways. Like uh, just to keep busy and have something to do to entertain people for somebody that, you know, comes to my classes and that really enjoys cooking or just wants to learn how to cook. It's been really rewarding. Um, doing it virtually now, uh, I always did Suffolk County and Nassau County, but now virtually, I actually do all the way up to Niagara Falls, and I actually do uh, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, um, and I also have uh, one in Detroit, Michigan coming up, which that's my furthest one. So, so I'm enjoying it. And also, my, my son and I, we've actually been teaching classes and learning classes from different chefs in Rome and Venice. Soon we have one in Milan coming up. And then we also have Santorini, Greece. We did one. We did a tomato fritters class there, which I hope to bring to your library someday. I will be doing it somewhere on the island, so if you like my Facebook page, you'll get to know what it is, okay? I'm gonna cut up some red onion. Someone said you are both awesome. Thank you for sharing del delicious recipes, and that's awesome. You are welcome. Actually, I want to take a poll out there. Since it's so nice, the weather, do you think 8 o'clock is better, or do you like the 6.30, 7 o'clock time? I just, just so I know, because that way I always tell the libraries, and, you know, not that it's going to happen, but, you know, because we always have somebody from the library that's got to work, too, so they also don't want to be up late as well, and then I have to clean it, but I'm trying to please as many people as I can. Okay, I am gonna put in some plum tomatoes. The plum tomatoes, and any tomato, always put face down, so that way no moisture gets into it and it will make them last a lot longer. Okay. You could put up the two tomatoes in there, especially if they're the plum ones. I'm going to take a jalapeno. The jalapeno, I'm using a half. If you like it very spicy, you leave the seeds in, but if you don't like it spicy, you can either leave this all out or just take out the white and the seeds, okay? So I like spice, but not too much, okay? So I am just going to take these seeds out right here, scoop them out, and I use them with the gloves because if you don't have the gloves on, you go and rub your eyes later. You're going to remember you were dealing with jalapeno, okay? So I'm just going to cut this into small pieces because I want it to go really throughout the whole relish. Okay, just like that. Now I have a little bit of cilantro. Cilantro is not for everybody, so if you don't like your cilantro, don't worry about it. You don't have to put it in. You can always switch it with parsley if you want. So I am just going to chop up. Someone said 6.30 to 7 is good for me. Someone else said 6.30 is fine. Someone else said 7 p.m. is great. Good. Okay. So we're doing it at the right times then. If we're in between the 6.30 and the 7 o'clock, we're, we're okay then. Okay. I am just going to chop this cilantro up. I do like cilantro, but like I said, not everybody does. When I am doing cooking shows, uh, about 50% of the people will say, can you leave out the cilantro? So I usually do that. This is what it looks like right now. Now I'm going to add a little bit of kosher salt and black pepper. The reason you're always putting a little bit of salt in there is it brings out that mango flavor, the tomatoes and a little bit of black pepper. Okay. And as 
as I am mixing this up and going to put these lettuce wraps together, I'm going to tell you about the last class that I have for this week. The last class that I have, it's on the same day as Fonda Frances at Riverhead. At 6.30 at Bayport Blue Point, I, and it's for the children's department, but you're allowed to go. It's Facebook. It is cake batter cookies, okay? So if you have yourself, grandkids, kids, they will love this recipe. So I am just going to mix this up really well. A lot of flavor, right? Now what I want to do is I'm going to take, I'm just going to make two of them. I'm taking the mahi-mahi off, and I'm just going to put that right over here. I'm going to put two lettuce leaves right here. The butter lettuce leaves or the, or the romaine would be just fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this into chunks. I want it into nice sized chunks. i use the other knife. Because I don't want to just taste the mahi, ma uh, I'm sorry, the mango or the tomato relish. I really want to get some good mahi mahi flavor in. Okay, so I am going to Mix that again. I am going to add some of this to it, the mahi. If I need the other piece, I have it here. If not, perfect for a sandwich. Now this on a lettuce wrap. And any firm fish would do, whether you have grouper, okay, even a, a catfish, uh, anything like that would work well. So I'm going to put some right here. Now, serving this, if I'm having company, I want all those really bright colors to really stand out really well, okay? So I could leave it just like that, and then company can start putting it together. They can eat it just like that, where they go in with a fork, or you could just take it, and you could just start rolling it up just like this. Sometimes a little tricky to get it, because see the moisture from it? So it can get a little bit loose. You have some crispiness right here, okay? So either way, I'm just gonna kind of put it back so it looks really pretty. I'm gonna show you both dishes at the same time. So those are our two dishes. You can always put a little lemon wedge with the mahi-mahi, but I almost feel like with the lime in there and the different citruses in there, it really doesn't need anything, okay? So I want to ask everybody out there, um, well, of course, any other questions? If you don't have any other questions, would you like to see some, another recipe? I got time if you want. Does anybody out there want to see one? Let me know what they say, Chris. Okay. They may want to go and go for a walk of that. Any comments? Not yet. Hold Not on. yet. Well, I am going to start one, so whoever wants to stay on, please stay on. This has been, both my boys have loved this recipe since they were yay high, okay? Now they're 19 and 22. My son is actually kind of looking around like, what are you bringing out? What was one of your favorite things that I've made, Chris, in the classes? Capellini pancakes. Capellini pancakes is one, but that is not the answer. I'm going to slowly start. You're going to take some nice baguette, nice fresh baguette. If it's not warm, you can always just take it and put it right onto the grill. Just warm it up just so it's nice and fresh again, even though it's fresh. I have some fire roasted uh, peppers right here. I'm just going to make a little on a plate right here. These peppers, what I did was I throw them on the barbecue with the skin, and then I immerse them in some uh, ice water, and all the peel and the seeds come off. So I am just going to give this a rough chop, just like that. We have a few questions. Sure. Someone said, can I see these recipes again? Yeah, they should, they should be online. Uh, I did send them to the library yesterday. So if you don't have them online, uh, Facebook or um, on the website of the library, I will send them a new email, send them the recipes again, okay? But is anybody out there seeing them anywhere? If you are, please just let me know where they are.
Someone said, looks delicious. Where do you get your knives sharpened? Uh, I sharpen them. Uh, I actually have a tool. I'll bring that over in a minute. If you just, Chris, just remind me in a minute. Okay. I'm going to finish this, this dish first. I have some roasted peppers right here. I'm going to add a little bit more of the capers. Chris, do you know where I'm going with this yet? I don't see goat cheese, but that okay, going with right. the goat and cheese. Okay, that's what I'm going to get to. I'm going to put in a little bit of fresh garlic. So what this is, is roasted peppers, fresh garlic, and capers. Again, we got to go back to our kosher salt. Fresh ground black pepper. A little bit of extra virgin olive oil. And now a little bit of balsamic vinegar. If you let this marinate for a little while, it does have so much flavor. The balsamic vinegar I'm using, it's called Supremo Italiano. This again is from a restaurant depot. It's very, very good. 